please remember I am not a financial advisor. We must respect the past and mistrust the present if we wish to provide for the safety of the future. A steady drumbeat of uh, new announcements. Um, and so the the announcement that uh, will uh, will be live by the time this uh, launches is that we've added support for uh, Ripple. Um, that's uh, there's a uh, actually quite a quite a lot of institutional folks that have Ripple, uh, and so we're um, we're looking forward to uh, starting to onboard some of those folks. There's actually uh, quite a lot of them who want to want to hold with us. Anchorage is the first federal chartered digital asset bank. They're the first bank that accepts crypto for institutions. And Nathan McCauley said that there was quite a lot of institutional folks that have Ripple, meaning XRP. And then he repeated himself because there's so many institutional investors. The smart money knows what's coming, yet you rarely hear about institutional investors in XRP. Um, another possible model um, is one where uh, different uh, payment systems, national payment systems would be uh, interoperable, that is, would be based on uh, on, uh, on common standards, but not necessarily with uh, uh, with uh, with bridges be- being built uh, between them. So, so there are different models, and we've discussed that in a uh, in a recent uh, uh, BIS uh, working paper. So I can I can uh, I can uh, refer to that. Um, so the the MCBDC platform approach is one where. Uh, the um, the uh, exchange and settlement of different CBDCs are uh, brought together on the, on the same platform, and uh, here the key advantage is about the uh, is about streamlining the uh, the number of possible transactions. Uh, uh, if you have a, if you have a, a large number of uh, of, the, of CBDCs uh, in the global economy, uh, then you have. Uh, an even larger number of possible transactions between uh, different uh, couples of CBDCs, um, n times n minus one over two, I guess. Uh, and uh, and if you want to uh, if you want to make this faster to streamline this, uh, it makes a lot of sense to bring the the transactions on a single platform, uh, where uh, possibly also with a uh, with a single settlement asset uh, that would be used in the uh, in the platform. To uh, to reduce the number of possible transactions, so that's why that's why there, there is no answer yet uh, to these questions. Uh, that's uh, what we're looking into in the MCBDC Bridge project in Hong Kong, uh, and also as far as the, as the BIS Innovation Hub is uh, is concerned, in another project that we are developing in our uh, in our Singapore Center project Dunbar, which also uh, looks at uh, different ways to uh, to connect uh, uh, different CBDCs. The central banks are exploring different designs for swapping CBDCs. However, the designs that they have explored recreate the same correspondent banking relationships. Therefore, there is a fundamental flaw in these designs, where trillions will be frozen with Nostro and Vostro accounts. Eventually, they will explore the bridge asset design, and we know the relationship Ripple has had with the IMF and other central banks. The central bank, the biz, are well aware of the solution Ripple has to offer with private central bank digital currencies hosted on the XRP ledger, and XRP in the center. When this solution is tested, they will come to the same conclusion that we have came to. XRP is a superior technology. Um, So the question is, what might be the impact of a CBDC launch on private competitors such as Facebook DM or Ripple's XRP? Does... um, Anybody want to to take a take a chance with that? Well, I'll, I'll make a few comments. Um, you know, we see it as complementary. You know, we don't see this. Uh, first of all, it, any payment system is in some level of competition with others. That's just the nature and the fungibility of some of these. As, as Antoine mentioned, is not one solution. But the goal would be it's complementary, and if we did release it, it's to provide maximum choice. Uh, for consumers and businesses and the government itself as to how they they do it. Um, Dave mentioned the work of a number of central banks under the BIS, the Bank for International Settlement uh, Perspective. And one of the guiding principles there is interoperability and coexistence. So we see that this is not about you know, replacing cash or replacing a certain payment system or a certain or cryptocurrency or stablecoin. Uh, there'll be some natural competition but it's not about replacement. It's about coexistence as a goal. 
Great. And, and D, we actually had a number of, of comments come in on that. So that is a big issue of concern. Um, and, and I think in general, there has been a concern. Is this going to be open for collaboration with the private sector? Or is this, you know, could there be a case of competition or sort of keeping out the private sector? So it's great to hear that this will be complementary. Yeah, um, I make one more point on that, Patricia, if I could. Does- I also see the potential if it's built right for a CBDC really to be a platform for innovation. You know, we don't see this as stopping innovation. We think the CBDC itself could be innovated on top of to create, you know, services for the unbanked and or financial inclusion. So uh, I think the innovation will only only grow from from the issuance of a CBDC if, if done right. That's great. And actually, um, I think that one of the questions, and maybe this is too specific, but one question is, which blockchain ecosystem do you see CBDCs being run on? You know, again, Ripple, Stellar, some of these other ones. Uh, and, and maybe what you're saying is you see a CBD system that others can build on. But how, how do you see just going one step further about coexisting? Look, I'll say, you know, we're we're agnostic on what technology is used to presume that blockchain is the right answer, I think is the wrong way of approaching it. Uh, blockchain is still relatively new, it's growing, and there are pieces of blockchain, I think, that have merit and can potentially be a platform or a piece of a platform. But we're not presuming that anyone, uh, especially if you look at you know, an economy the size of the U.S., um, we're looking at tens of thousands of transactions per second, and that's before you even consider the possibility of micropayments or IoT payments. Uh, so, you know, at, at this stage, most blockchains are limited, especially permissionless. Um, so I think it's, it's potential, but I don't think that's necessarily the right answer. Okay. Jim Kuna from the Federal Reserve of Boston that heads up the technology division of the Federal Reserve is telling us that there will not be one chain. Ethereum maxis will argue that the next-gen financial infrastructure will be built on Ethereum because of the various projects that Consensus works on. However, what Jim is telling you is that the world will not agree on one chain. It might not even be a blockchain. There might be a cryptographically secured centralized model that works on its own technology. XRP is the bridge between all. RippleNet is integrated into the current day payment systems through Finastra, Earthport, Temenos, and other payment hubs. The world and the new world can be bridged with XRP, and the next world will not have one chain that rules them all. Goods from point A to point B, you can think of internet protocols as containers that move information from point A to point B, and cryptocurrencies exactly do the same thing for value. And like we have the internet which carries the information, but underlying there needs to be a container for value, and that's what digital assets are. So to respond to your earlier question, uh, to my mind, payments is the killer app, right? And if I'm very specific, it would be cross-border payments because the friction is extremely high for people when they move money, uh, goods or services cross-border. And then second would be micropayments. Today, micropayments are impossible because above a certain point, the traditional system is not able to carry value from point A to point B, it costs a minimum amount, whatever that would be. But if financial inclusion needs to happen, we need to lower the cost by 100 uh, of mm-hmm. the current cost structure. So it will, it, so to my mind, of course, it will disrupt in some way, but also it will be complementary to the current system. So the current system would still be the KYC, would be the AML, would be the last mile connectivity in some way. And then the containerization would mean that value will move exactly the way the way it works in port. So there will be a domestic system which will take things to the port, and after that, there will be big shifts that will carry from one place to another. And digital assets or cryptocurrencies will be one of them. Recently, I discovered a PDF from Yes Bank. Google has the date as June 17, 2021. However, there is no date in the actual PDF. Yes Bank realizes that digital assets will be the container to move value. Yes Bank partnered with Ripple originally as an ex current customer. However, in this PDF, it states that Yes Bank will be taking advantage of, quote, instant settlement for cross border remittances. XRP is a settlement asset, while X current was a payment service. The payment is an IOU, while the settlement is the actual funds that land in your account. Instant cross-border settlement is not possible with the current banking system. It's only possible with crypto assets. 
And since this says it's for cross-border remittances, that rolls out stable coins. I, I, similarly, we're, we're, we're going through the vortex here and, and there's no turning back. And, and we're going to think back and say, oh my gosh, how did how the world ever exist like that before? The aim of an argument or of discussion should not be a victory, but progress. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this video, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're interested, I have a Patreon where I post the videos earlier while I'm putting the finishing touches on the YouTube version. My Patreon offers Discord access and information that I gather for the production of my videos, as well as a weekly Zoom meeting where we have a general crypto discussion.